Okay. All right. So uh, we are now going to talk about the uh, the timbers. They're going to hold uh, kind of this trench side walkway, um, hold the embankment back. So for the easy thing I'm going to use is these so-called skinny sticks. Um, another. People refer to these as coffee stirs, they're wooden coffee stirs. Of course you could use balsa wood or basswood or whatever, and that would be fine. I just like these because they're inexpensive. They look like planks to scale, so they're ready to go. And so what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to use these as kind of the planks that hold back this earthen mound. Okay, if I can do this. All right, and so I'm basically going to stack these more or less. They're sliding on me, but you get the idea. Um, over here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these. I'm going to mark with a mark uh, pen uh, how long these should be and cut them down. Okay. And so after I've done that, and I've got these wooden planks in, I will show you the next step. But again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these. I'm going to, with a pen, mark basically how long each should be so I can come to shape glue them in there and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so you're going to use these coffee stirs as your wooden planks or again use balsa wood or whatnot. Okay, so now we're talking about doing the planking on the trench-like entryway to this bunker. Alright, so what I did is I cut these coffee stirs or craft sticks um, to that kind of shape. Now I didn't, I told you I'd mark them against the hill as I put them in place. Don't taper them when you cut them to match the hill. That would look unnatural. You want to leave the squared sides to these boards. As you can see, I've done uh, both sides of that entryway like that. Next thing we do need are the vertical supports that hold back those planks or hold up those planks. So I like to use these very inexpensive um, matchsticks, they're called, which are available in bulk from a craft store. And so uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to put these Sorry, you're going to put these as your vertical supports to hold back that plank stuff. All right, so I've already pre cut some pieces just to speed things along to show you how that works. So, um, as I've said in some of my past videos, my favorite way to um, apply glue to small wooden pieces is to paint it on with an expendable, kind of lousy paintbrush. To me, it's just a really easy way to get onto that surface area without applying too much glue. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first wooden vertical support in like that. Let me do another one in a similar fashion. Okay, again, uh, kind of painting on my glue. You gotta be, the only thing with that method of painting on your glue with your lousy brush <laughs> is, uh, is to make sure that you get enough glue on. Sometimes that can be the trick. All right, so you know what? That's I didn't get enough glue on my first one. It came out on contact, so it was never going to survive any wear and tear. So it's good that I find out now. So let me reapply that piece with some fresh glue on it. All right, so that's basically. Let me zoom out there a little bit. That's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to put these supports up and down the line. For the um, lower areas, the supports are going to be appropriately shorter, all right, like that right there. And so that's kind of the idea as they taper down to match the, uh, the height of the boards. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of those in, and then we'll move on to the next part of the video. Okay, we are about three steps away from getting this to the gaming table. Um, we have to uh, fill in these gaps a little bit. Uh, where there's a crease between the styrofoam base and the foam core bunker where I want to fill those in, especially this one here. Fill that in. The second thing we've got to do is texture this base to give it a dirt-like structure um, and as well as texture this bunker to give it a stone or cement concrete-like structure um, or texture to it. And the third thing we'll have to do is paint this thing. So let's talk about the first of those last three steps, filling in those gaps. Now, I like to use a little bit of spackle. I understand in the UK and um, elsewhere in Europe, they call this filler. Okay, it's spackling in the United States. I like the stuff that uh, goes on pink. And when it's dry, it uh, turns to a white color. So you know it's ready to go, ready to uh, paint over or whatever. A um, couple ways to apply this as a gap filler. Uh, one is, you know, those bits of 
uh, coffee stirs that we used earlier for the planking. Those are good ways to get it to where you need it. Um, a good old fashioned butter knife, you know, an extra laying around. I stole this from the kitchen uh, years ago. My wife uh, tracked it down eventually, but then, uh, you know, we, uh, we agreed that I could have one butter knife for my hobby purposes, so yay. Alright, so anyway, I am going to get into some of those gaps with this filler, or we call it spackling here in the U.S., and just start to... And, you know, sometimes you'll get the stuff where you don't want it, and it's very easy to work with, so that's not a big deal. I'm going to start to uh, fill in those cracks. All right, and so it's okay if I have more than I need in an area. We can smooth it out. In the end, this whole base gets textured all right, with a, with a sand and kitty litter type mix, which you'll see in the next stage. So it really doesn't matter too much um, if I'm smearing it here and there, as long as I even it out. Okay, and so forth and so on. I don't care if I have residue because that is definitely not going to show up in the end. So basically, I just filled that gap in there. Okay, um, I'm not going to worry too much about the gaps, any gaps that may be between your uh, retaining wall for your trench and this embankment. There, if there are some slight gaps there, we're going to probably add some sandbags to this later. And so, if we do that, then uh, it's going to be a non issue. So, just want to mention that. So um, what I'm doing now is looking for any other serious crevices or cracks. I've got some on the back of the building here. Now I'm just going right in with a knife this time and filling that in. Again, I'm, I'm getting it everywhere, but as long as I, you know, spread it out, it's not going to be much of an issue. But I want to fill that crack. I probably will cover up some of those rivets that we put on there, but well, that's okay. If they'd be covered up in real life, they'd be they'd be covered up anyway. So again, a lot of residue around here. I just want to spread this out. In the end, you'll never know that this was not part of the styrofoam base. If we do it right, which we will. Okay, got some more gap there that I want to fill in. Okay, it's kind of messy if you get on your fingers, but not the end of the world. All right, so I'm filling in that gap area. All right, so basically we're we're filling on the edges. So I'm going to continue to do that, not make you watch the whole thing, but make sure I bring the base right up to the retaining wall of that bunker everywhere, and there's no serious gaps, and then we'll be ready for the next step. So that's uh, how you spackle to fill in gaps. You can also use spackle, by the way, just to build up terrain. All right, you could have really, if you wanted to, um, made these entire pilings, this embankment, out of spackle. It's just a big pile takes a long time to dry. It makes for a much heavier terrain piece too and I don't think is durable. So um, anyway I'll finish that up and uh, you can see the result in just a second.